let's say this person has some success. Maybe he enters the church and that's a big help, you know, for people. Uh, that was a help for me in my experience entering the church. You get a lot Absolutely. of grace from the mysteries to help you to stop these outward actions. And those, those are actually the easy ones to stop. But then we go into the realm of thoughts, which is a struggle, probably a, a lifetime struggle. Um, so let's say so the person is able to stop the self abuse, but then they still are having passionate thoughts. So can you give us some advice for how to struggle against thoughts? So first and foremost, the thoughts never stop because there's this this whole world we live in is 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 in Greek preptos, which means constantly changing. And the thoughts will never stop. So the question is not, are you going to have thoughts? Of course, you're going to have thoughts. Are you going to have thoughts that are at least for most people, I mean, there are there are ascetics who reach great heights of total dispassion, and they they're in another realm. But for the for the vast majority of us, we're going to have always have thoughts, and we're going to deal with them. The question is how and what thoughts, and how are we going to be slaves to them? Are we going to be uh, able to look at them, uh, look at them, and put them aside, and and have have that which is going to elevate us as opposed to bring us down? So. Um, Let's think about, let's, for instance, let's think about some thought that moves us to judgment or to, uh, comes and undermines us and, uh, which is very, very often in confession, you'll hear, especially women come and say, you know, I moved to jealousy, envy, anger, uh, you know, by these, th these thoughts. And I'm thinking about these people. And so how do we get ahead of that? How do we get ahead of that so we're not just just victims and we just like passive receivers? I mean, because that's that's the nature of of the passions, right? We're we're passive receivers. They they act on us from the outside, not we controlling them. Same thing happens in the realm of the thoughts. So how do we get ahead of the thoughts and 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 uh, are in control? Um, the only way we're going to be able to do that is to train our intellect to be on guard continually. To be at the, the to have watchfulness, right? Nipsis in Greek. So at the heart, at the heart of the spiritual life, there's two things, and that uh, in terms of prayer, in terms of the inner man, right? It's watchfulness and prayer. That's that's everything. If you read the Philokalia, read the writings of the Church Fathers on these topics, that's the, the the pillars, the pillars. So you can't just have watchfulness without prayer. You can't have prayer without watch because the thoughts are constantly coming. So you you through the prayer, the Jesus prayer first and foremost, and what has been handed down to us and proven for 2,000 years is the prayer of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And at the heart of the Hesychus life and at the heart of every monastery that is making progress spiritually is going to be the prayer. And so uh, when we get up in the morning, before we go to bed and throughout the whole day, but especially in our rule in the morning, we cultivate the prayer. And the prayer is going to be achieved in the sense of becoming a part of our uh, inner life is going to be achieved with violence against the old man it's not going to come easy you're going to have to push yourself and you're going to have to push your intellect and your intellect is going to fall away again and again and again you're going to bring it back again and again and again and this process will go on for quite some time maybe for all for all of us the rest of our life um and that's that's what you see in the lives of the saints. You you see, for instance, Saint Joseph Hesychus, all night long, they'll have their prayer rule, which could be, you know, if you want to just get a sense of just the degree of love and 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 violence against the old man that these men practiced. You just just think about the the rule that they had, which very few people could could withstand today. But their rule would be thousands upon thousands of every night prayers, uh, Jesus prayers, and also. Um, most holy Theotokos, most holy mother of God, save us. If they were in a younger age, they would be in hundreds and hundreds, if not more. And sometimes they talked about even more uh, prostrations, full prostrations of the ground, saying the prayer in the in the desert there. Uh, and then after they got the rule done, then they would have just hours of prayer without any numbers, without counting anything, right? So that would be the time of noetic prayer, where they're just focused in their noose, Right in their in their spirit on the the on the prayer, 
Uh, and so, so what is that? All that's that's the the focus of the whole person desiring communion with God and asking and begging and knocking at the door to have that communion, to be in communion, be uninterrupted communion with God. Uh, and that's 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 the the stance of all Orthodox Christians, whether we have thousands or hundreds or de or, or 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 dozens of prayers. That's the stance we need to cultivate to be always desirous of communion and union with God. So if we are ha if we have that spiritual stance, we're cultivating the prayer, we're watchful, we're learning over time through the gu guidance of the spiritual father and through the reading of the church fathers what to watch for, how to understand the coming. Then when the provocation comes, because they always come all the time, but certain provocations, really intense provocations, if you're on guard, over your soul and your heart, then you're going to have a chance to repel the enemy, right? But if you are totally sleeping or not even near the gate, or or the gate is wide open, they're going to walk right in. That's that. There's no there's no battle there. There's no there's no struggle there. I mean, we're just we're just passive receivers of the thoughts, right? So you got to get on the gate. You got to be over the the city wall on guard, and you got to see the enemy coming. And that's only going to happen when you're cultivating it. You're prepared from the day beginning of the day. You're, you're prepared to fight, right? Your mm -hmm. stance. So that's how you're going to deal with those thoughts. So the thoughts are going to come, and especially if you've if you've given yourself over in the past to this passion or other passions, you've become a slave to them. You've become addicted to these things. You've you you as I said, you've dug the canal so that the the water easily flows to and fro and comes comes back. Then you're going to have even more patience necessary and more of a struggle over time but by the grace of god we have we we can achieve m many degrees of autonomy from that and union with god over time by the grace of god through humility through obedience through prayer you can and and many have come freed from even that mm. lifestyle and life that you led before baptism which was so ingrained in fulfilling and becoming a slave, a slave and obedient to the passions, you can become free. But it's going to take a struggle. It's going to take a struggle in that cultivation of, the, of, of that stance and that watchfulness. There's no other way around it. I don't know of any other way, and I don't think any other ways come down to us to be free of the thoughts uh, that are besieging us. Uh, the thought and things I'm thinking of right now is uh, that this seems to be easier, like around uh, Holy Week and Pascha, when you're going to church every day and you're kind of it's a time of more intense watchfulness. But uh, it's easier to fall away from that watchfulness the rest of the year, you know. Absolutely, but just the fact that you just said that and we recognize that and we all shake our head, what does that tell us? That it's possible. Yeah, with God, it's possible. Uh, the church gives us uh, 40 days and the Pascha, I mean, the Holy Week and Pascha, not as an exception, but as, as an example and as the rule for our life. So we have to remember that um, it, it's exceptional to fast as we do during the 40 days before Pascha. And maybe we won't actually, you know, keep that, that fast from particular foods throughout the year, obviously. But the stance can be applied. The watchfulness, the mindfulness—that's the—that's why. That's why the 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 ascetics fast. That's why the saints fast continually is to maintain the watchfulness, and therefore to be the lords over their manner and not to be slaves to the to the uh, enemy. Uh, that's the end goal, right? I think I think a lot of people today they don't understand why and what they're doing in church. Like, why do I go to church? Unfortunately, much of what passes as orthodox spiritual life is is more is more akin to a western moralism than than orthodox spiritual life today and so we've got a first and foremost say why am i what am i doing why am i getting up at four or five in the morning saying the jesus prayer what's the end goal why did i go to church why do i commune what's the point and it is to be totally and fully restored to the image and likeness and become us become a, a, a free from the passions that's the ultimate purpose of our life in Christ, the incarnation, you know, bring man back to the, the way God intended him to be. Um, so we have to keep that always be, before us. Oh, yeah.